I bring you special greetings today in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless God for some of you that have been talking to us through email, through telephone calls, trying to let us know how richly you've been blessed by our messages. And we are excited to get this feedback from across the globe. Today we feel like doing a teaching today on what we consider a very important topic that will help us and help current believers, especially those who are conscious of the fact that they are pilgrims here and they want to make heaven. I really want us to dwell extensively on what I have called days of spiritual low percent. Days of spiritual low percent is a teaching and um, by the grace of God, we're going to begin to extray this message. It can be in part one, part two, part three, days of spiritual low percent. And it will be good that you listen attentively to this teaching and know what the Lord has to say to us. This end time anointing decade is indeed booming with the attendant prosperity emphasis. The power of God has been manifested and we bless God for it. However, one wonders why Christians, even those mightly used, still fall into sin and become a disgrace to what they profess. The practical reason is that many bask in the euphoria of the glory of God and they fail to plan and be careful on the day of spiritual low percent. And in this case, when we talk about days of spiritual low percent, we mean a day when a Christian surprisingly sees himself feeling angry and depressed without a known cause. Sometimes ungodly desires springing up. Sometimes you may wake up and begin to see yourself feeling intensively sexy, an intensive natural urge. And let us not pretend about this. No Christian can maintain 24-hour high spiritual level throughout his Christian life. There are days of spiritual low percent. Let's bow our heads in prayers. Our Father, I give you the glory, I give you the praise. Open our eyes to understand and cause our listeners to be able to digest what you are saying concerning days of spiritual low percent. Be thou glorified in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so just like I have said, our teaching today we discuss the reality of days of spiritual low percent. The havoc in the Christian life as a consequence of days of spiritual low percent and the carelessness on such days. And I want to say this clearly at the onset of this teaching. The devil has not lost hope concerning any person. No matter how old, no matter how anointed, no matter, the devil has not lost hope concerning you. And we shall also explain the signs and causes of spiritual low percent. We shall also look at David's experience in the days of spiritual low percent. We we'll also look at today's application to it. Many mighty men, both biblical and contemporary men, they failed as a result of wrong approach to opposite sex relationships. Our teaching today will delve into such relationships and summarize with solemn peace on things to avoid and what to do on the days of spiritual low percent. Someone listened to this, my topic, and he said, oh, I want to hear this, I want to hear about high percent and not low percent. Well, the person might be living in the moon. What we are talking about today is praxis, practical issues. It is better to be aware of the existence of such days and become careful than to refuse to know anything about it until you become a victim. We are still putting on flesh, and the devil has not yet died. Now listen to me, my listener. You are putting on flesh, number one. Number two, the devil is not yet dead. I know many a time people use digger, use shovel, and say we are digging the ground. We bury the devil. They will carat the devil. They will push the devil, do a lot of things. These are mere physical exercises. The devil is not dying right now. Both God and Satan will not force anyone to do anything. But I want to let you know today, your destiny is right in your choice. 
It's going to help you if you want to grow and mature as a Christian. Practical realities of the Christian experience. I pray that after going through this teaching, it will be a source of spiritual strength for heavenly candidates. Of course, in the same vein, I believe that those who are not privileged to see this thing handled life through this teaching that is coming to you through this audio, you will be able to sit down, listen to what it is saying. Let me begin by looking at the reality of the days of spiritual low percent. Is it really real? These days when Christians talk about high tension Pentecostal anointing with a wave of power and glory, how can somebody begin to talk about low percent? Is it not a language fabricated to water down anointing and zeal and fire burning in the heart of the end time Christians and ministers? This preacher, is he not too pessimistic for our dynamic age? And what you are talking about, Mr. Preacher, do you think it will merit a popular preach on ovation from the audience while you are preaching? Will people clap their hands? Will people come and drop their offering on the altar while you are preaching this type of thing? Well, let me ask a practical question. What level of spirituality do you maintain? A hundred percent? All the time? Probably you were saved in 19 Abraham, received the Holy Spirit in 19 Moses. You joined the ministry in 19 Hosea. You may be in the corridors of power in the ecclesiastical circle. You have been a leader of your church, a leader of your fellowship for three decades, about 30 years now. Furthermore, probably the anointing on your life is better called liquid fire anointing. Demons fear you. You live day by day in the miraculous realm. Your name has become a household name in Christendom. And probably you may be called a spiritual thermometer. But I want to ask you a question. You may have all these titles. You may be Archbishop, Bishop, Right Reverend, Very Reverend, General Superintendent, General Overseer, Doctor, Prophet, Missionary, Evangelist, Elder, Deacon, Knight. Congratulations for all these ecclesiastical titles. But beyond the title, let's talk about some realities. Probably your ministry has gone international. You have become the man or woman of the hour. That's your popular name. You fast every three days, plus other heroic spiritual exercises. But I want you to be sincere to yourself. I want you to be practical, realistic to yourself and to God. Can you go to the corner with this message? Look at yourself. Let it be a mirror. Let it be an x-ray today. Look at yourself. Do you really maintain a hundred percent spirituality? 24 hours every day. Forget about the way people see you. We can be deceived by what people call us and the way they see us. At their days, I want to ask you, a sincere question today. At their days and hours when you discover that you are spiritually low, do you experience a kind of spiritual zigzag? If a graph of your spiritual life is plotted, what will it look like? Straight, curved, or zigzag? I want you to be very, very sincere in your life. Are you of this representation? 100% on Sunday, 90% on Monday, 80% on Tuesday, and 70% on Friday. Or January 100%, March 90%, April 60%, May 50%. Just evaluate yourself. Let this teaching be something that will cause you to evaluate yourself. We need to examine ourselves. If you live in the super ring and you maintain 24 hours, 100% spirituality every day, then Go, this message is not for you. Break the CD. Break the plate. It, you don't belong here. In fact, I tell you, I doubt whether you're a human being. You have no need to pray. You don't even need to read the Bible. You don't even need to attend church service or go to fellowship. You should not even see death. You should be taken alive to heaven like Elijah because you have graduated in the school of spirituality. Christianity is a school of continuous learning till rapture or death. No living being has yet graduated in the school of spirituality. All of us are perpetual students. I am a firm believer in instantaneous, progressive, and ultimate sanctification. We are still growing. The deeper you know him, the more you realize that you have not yet known him. If you are a believer, progressive sanctification is on in your life. Now, let me ask you a question. At this your age, 
Are there things you are still struggling to give up or overcome? Be sincere. Stop pretending. Mr. Preacher, yes, I know you shout. I know. I mean, go everywhere. They think, they think you're a giant. Some people don't even believe you go to the toilet because of your spirituality. But let me ask you a question now. Are there things you are still struggling to give up? Are there things you are still struggling to overcome? And let me ask you again. Have you reached your standard, your ultimate standard in this race? I have an opinion that any day you get relaxed and satisfied with your standard, growth opportunities will stop. The next is spiritual retirement. Backsliding begins and spiritual death will zoom in. As a result, maintaining 100% spirituality 24 hours a day is not just something you claim by faith. I have it. No, 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 no. Practically, there are days of spiritual low percent. Days you are not happy with yourself. Days you are not happy with your ministry. You wonder if God is still with you. Sometimes you think like that. There are times when you doubt the reality of heaven. This happens in the life of everyone from preacher to member. It may be that you are facing some problems. It is realistic. If you are not careful during such days, you may commit sin. Days of spiritual low percent are days you must watch. Not recognizing it or accepting it as a reality is very, very dangerous. And it's as dangerous as sin itself. The days of spiritual low percent lead to havoc in the life of a Christian if you are not very careful about it. Now, what about havoc am I talking about? Now, let me ask you a question. Does it not churn your stomach to hear that a Christian a born-again Christian fought, either in the yard, in the office, or in the marketplace. He fought. How does it sound that a church was locked for two weeks, the security agents preventing everyone from going in because of a free-for-all fight in the church? How does it sound? Is it sweet that the church is becoming more political than politicians? How can a minister be afraid of relaxing and eating in his colleague's house? For fear of being poisoned. When a pastor is afraid of eating in the house of a fellow pastor. For fear of being poisoned. Probably because they are political opponents. Is it not too ugly to hear that a minister of the gospel. Who attended a theological school. With diploma or degree. Probably an ordained minister. Pastoring a large congregation. Committed fornication and adultery. That a shepherd. A shepherd ate, spoiled the sheep he was asked to take care of. Does it not chunk your stomach? Is it praiseworthy that church deacons and elders came to the platform? We stood a man of God, threatening to literally carry him out of the church if he preached. I want to ask you further questions. How wonderful is it to hear that a powerful preacher with signs and wonders divorced his living wife and is now parading about with his second wife? Still pulling crap. People are still following him. A divorcee. People are still following him. He married a second wife. And let me ask you a question. Is it not strange that a Christian musician will drink alcohol, have drugs before going to perform on the stage? They take alcohol in the secret and then go to perform on the stage singing Christian music. That a Christian musician will go take India, take Indian hemp. Take cocaine before going out to perform in the name of the Lord. Is it not strange? These are days when an invited preacher or musician can attend a program with a hired wife, hired sim partner, and comes and stays in the hotel and still does what he does, all in the name of the Lord. It could be hard that a Christian impregnated his maid, somebody he feels in his house. These are what I consider havocs in Christian life. And I tell you, backsliding cannot be automatic. They started in the days of spiritual low percent. That's why I feel this topic is very, very important. That we begin to catch it. Let's, let's catch it from the source. From the source, from the cradle of it. Because we, we, if, if we begin to write havoc that we have, things that have been handled, it will shock you. And let me say again, backsliding cannot be automatic. It begins with carelessness, 
on the days of spiritual low percent. Today is a common belief among many to assume that a Christian who deviates and begins to live in sin was never a genuine Christian. I don't believe that. A worst belief is that if anyone is saved, he can no longer backslide and be lost. Any preacher or Christian can fall at any point if he's not careful. Any Christian, no matter your height, no matter the anointing upon your life, if you're not careful, you can fall at any height. Because, my dear, a Christian is a human, is human. He lives in a human world. He undergoes all the pressures of the world. If the danger signs are not hidden, the Christian can be exposed to have works in his life. If you look at Christianity today, you begin to see this havoc. And it comes because people were not careful on the days of spiritual low percent. And let me tell you, one of the havocs of eternity is that some people will be used and abandoned at the end of the day. There are men and women that will be used. There are some people who are only interested in what God will use them to accomplish and not what God will do in them. Some may only be funny that is remembered when it is used and nothing is returned in it after use. We have thought, thought Christians. In our country, Nigeria, there are something we call thought. They can bring or even force passengers into taxis and buses at the park. But they themselves never travel to those destinations. Now we have these thought people who come in, they invite other people to the church. They say, come to our church. Our pastor's anointing is liquid fire anointing. They know how to bring people, invite other people to the church. But I tell you, they will not make heaven because they are careless. These are days of spiritual carelessness. And I pray, dear listener, that the Lord may deliver you from spiritual carelessness. You will not be among those who will influence others to come to church or fellowship, but not serious about going to heaven. Let me say, for the Christian, his journey is heaven bound. There are many who may make others get to heaven, but will not make heaven themselves. Let me say it again. Many who will make others go to heaven, but they will not get to heaven themselves. May God help us. This havoc could be avoided if everyone, if any born again Christian, will be sincere to the reality of the days of spiritual percent. Your life as a Christian should influence those around you. People may judge Christianity by the way you handle your days of low air. People have read the gospel according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They are now looking for the gospel according to your life. Gospel, you are the next gospel. You are the next gospel that people want to read. And I tell you, friend, real success is not what people call you. Real success is not what you have achieved. Real success is not your material acquisition. Real success is ending up in heaven. Because this life is too brief. Someone might maybe be voted for in a church or be appointed to a significant position in the church but it's at the back seat of the Holy Spirit. A church may be using a man that God has abandoned. Can I call you Echabod? Is it your name? Let me tell you something today. Let me tell you something briefly about the devil and you. It's very necessary for you as a Christian who is heaven bound to be conscious of the fact that the devil has not lost hope concerning your fall. Right where you are, the devil still believes that you are going to fall. He still believes that one day you will backslide and serve him. No wonder he persistently tempts you. I've even discovered that the higher you grow, the tougher the temptation. The devil does not accept defeat, not at all. If you win him today, he will still come tomorrow. You do not need a prophecy or vision to know that you are the target of the enemy and that he is determined to reduce and spoil you. You are a target. The Bible said in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. He looks, he's, you are adversaries. You already have an adversary, and that's the devil. The tempter is watchful. He never misses your moment of spiritual low percent. He immediately makes himself a friend. He manifests in several ways as a human being, laziness and pride. Usually the time to watch is the time you are doing well. When you are doing well, it's the time to be careful. As a preacher, 
It may be when the Holy Spirit is using you mightily. Miracles are done through you. At your meetings, people repent. It is a time to watch. The devil does not go for small fries. He goes for the big fish. Because he knows you are an Iroko tree. And the Iroko cannot fall alone. If you are falling, you will crash other trees. I've discovered that after each mighty revival meeting, after each mighty crusade where God moved, a mighty temptation usually follows. If you look at the Bible, after Jesus must have prayed for a long time, the Bible says, then come the devil. In Luke chapter 4, verses 1 to 13. The devil came after 40 days. The devil came after 40 days fast. I know a brother who came back from a three-day and night praying and fasting. When he reached home, I don't know what happened. He fought with the wife. From three days fasting and prayer, he reached home and fought with the wife. Why? The devil has not lost hope concerning anyone's fault. Even after each prayer and fasting camp meeting, mighty temptations follow. Why? The devil knows that if you continue to operate on that spiritual frequency, he will be in trouble. As a result, he struggles to reduce you. He never gets tired of tempting a godly saint. The devil never gets tired of tempting a godly saint. He has not yet accepted a final defeat concerning you. No matter bind him, thunder him, fire him, rend him, bury him, Look at what I want to let you know. He has not yet accepted a final defeat concerning you. If you study the book of Judges chapter 14 to 16, the devil was not afraid of the high tension anointing operating in the life of Samson. He still pursued Samson, tempted Samson, and tracked him down. If Satan was not afraid to tempt the Lord Jesus himself, who are you? Who are you, a mere man? This calls for carefulness. Don't relax. You are in a perpetual warfare. No holiday in the spiritual realm. Come out of the cocoon of spiritual retirement if you have resorted to one. Come out. Let me say this. In Judges chapter 16, verses 2 to 7. If Samson can become a prey after being used, if you are not careful, you could be a victim, no matter the level of anointing upon you. Look at what the Bible says. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy strength lie, and wherewith thou might be bound to afflict thee. And Samson said to her, If they bind me with seven green wheat that were never dried, then I shall be weak and be as any other man. I shall be weak and be as any other man. Now, hear me tell you something. The devil is interested in your weak point. He first knows your weak point. Some are easily irritated. That's their weak point. Some are addicted to sexual promiscuity. Some sow discord among brethren. There are other things. That's their weak point. And I tell you, discover your weak point before the devil does so. Men of purpose are not those without weak point. They guard against the onslaughts of the devil through, you know, they are at his heels. Their weak point. The intention of the devil is to make you like any other man. That's what the devil wants to do. He's not happy about your anointing. He's not happy about your elevation. He wants to reduce you and make you look like any other man. The devil has released his agents, like Samson's case, to make a research on the secret of your great strength. There's a research going on on the secret of your great strength. He's prepared to pay any price to conquer you. The devil is prepared to pay any price to conquer you. I remember in the year 1988, I had a crusade at Badiko, Kaduna, Nigeria. At the end of one of my preachings, one of the organizers called me aside and made an unforgettable comment to me. He said to me, if it will cause the devil to our beautiful ladies to get you down, he, the devil, will provide them. He saw what was in me and advised that Satan can pay any price to get me down. The Philistines discovered that Samson was a womanizer, and they set their traps with women. The comment of Samson is not worthy. Samson said, then I shall be weak and be like any other man. Mr. Preacher, my dear Christian, you are not an ordinary preacher or human being. You are unique. God has endowed you with power. God has made you special. The true position is that the intention and plan of the devil is to make you weak. Satan wants to make you weak and reduce you to an ordinary human being. I know that today in Christendom, 
We know how to bind the devil, thunder the devil, fire the devil, discipline the devil, die, devil, die, fire, thunder. But let me tell you, I don't believe in the devil is dead theology. The devil will not die now. You hear me? Devil will not die now. He's very much alive to tempt you and tempt me. Even when Jesus came, the devil challenged his coming to destroy them when their time has not reached. If you get to Matthew chapter 8, verse 28 to 29, when he was come to the other side, into the country of the Gerasene, they had made him too possessed with the devils, coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have you, what have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? And thou come here to torment us before the time? Have you come to destroy us before the time? This shows that they know that their time has not come. Devil, they know their time. The devil does not consider the unbelievers as problematic. You are his headache. You are the headache of the devil. He does not want to lose you. He plans, manipulates, and schemes concerning you. And his agenda is the strategy for your downfall. He wants to strategize so that you will fall. I want to tell you today, he's a strong believer in your downfall. He takes you up, therefore, on your weaknesses. Those weaknesses you've been able to overlook until he makes you a backslider. He's prepared to make use of any laxity on your part. Satan is an opportunist. Backsliding cannot be automatic. It's a gradual process. In the same vein, since we are still in the race, our arch enemy, the devil, is bent on bringing us down. It behooves us to always be alert. Constantly have spiritual checkups. Allow the Lord through the instrumentality of this message to speak to you today on the days of spiritual percent. A story was told about a member of Church of Satan who was fasting for the downfall of strong Christians and ministers. They were fasting for the downfall of strong Christians. My dear listener today, what will it look like if God will bring to limelight the video cassette of the life you live in secret? If God will bring to limelight the video cassette of the life you live in secret, probably the audience will whip out their heart. People will cry because they will see your true color. Look at what the Bible said in the book of Revelation chapter 3, 11 to 12. Behold, I come quickly. Behold, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man takes thy crown. And he says, him that overcometh, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of thy God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. If you look at that passage, the emphasis is that you should not let anybody take your crown. Somebody, the devil is determined to take your coveted crown. It is possible that someone could take your crown. You can fall, my brother. My sister, you can fall. Don't be deceived by one saved, always saved. Jesus saved. Him that overcome it. You may be a mighty vessel in the hand of God, yet not an overcomer. And, you know, for the Bible to be complete, there are people who will be used and abandoned at the end of the day. You can be used, and at last, you go to hell if you are not very, very careful. That's what we are trying to lay the foundation. That's what we are talking about. If you look at Joseph, in Genesis chapter 39, he found favor with both God and man. However, the devil went to tempt him through Potiphar's wife, such a woman of influence. It was not easy for Joseph to have said no to her. Someone who has labored in the Lord for 30 full years can lose heaven because he has become a target and fall prey to the devil's ante. The greatest mistake any Christian can make is to relax and underestimate the powers and tricks of the devil. Get tougher and prepare to face the perpetual battle which will only terminate at rapture or death. This is what you have to note. 
in our lives. In fact, it's very important that we know this great background that we are talking about today. But just before we round up, we let me take a look at signs, signs of days of spiritual low percent. What are those signs that you will experience in your life and you know that days of spiritual low percent are here? There are signs of mood you will find yourself and it will quickly signify that a day of spiritual low ebb has come. Just like people go to medical checkups, a believer should develop the habit of having spiritual checkups. The Bible enjoins us in the second epistle of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 5, to examine ourselves to see whether we are in the faith, and of course that we should test ourselves. It would be foolishness for a believer to ignore negative spiritual changes in his life. When it is left with careless abandon and devil may care attitude, the resultant effect will be spiritual disaster. If you become carnally high, you will be spiritually low. If you become spiritually high, you will be carnally low. There are signs you ought to watch in your life. When you experience these signs, it does not necessarily mean that you have seen. No, it doesn't mean you have seen. However, if you don't guide against them, it will eventually lead to sin. Let me share with you some of the signs. Number one, you may just come out in one day. One day you begin to see yourself feeling sexy, heavily. Let me ask you, precious heaven-bound saints, be practical and sincere to yourself. No matter how old you have been in the Lord, no matter the spiritual giant that you are, are there days when you, your body feels intensively sexy? This natural, it sweeps across bachelorhood, spinsterhood, widowhood, and even married people. I mean such days when your body becomes hard, sexually, very sensitive. When a mere extra mile touch by the opposite sex on you can easily arouse you sexually. This might happen when you wake up very early in the morning, your organ, if you are a man, might become erect, looking for fulfillment. If you are single or your partner is not around, don't you think that such is a danger sign? The desire itself is natural and is very necessary to fulfill your complete quality as a man or woman. These signs may be called natural instincts, but they require carefulness on the way you go about their fulfillment. That is what we are talking about. Such so days are days when falling prey the sexual sin is not difficult if you become careless. There are women who become high sexually and sensitive in certain days of their life. Some say they are sensitive especially during ovulation days. When you become sexually sensitive and cannot fulfill the desire immediately because your husband or wife travel or because you are a widow or maybe you are still single, then know that the desire has become a danger sign. I want to know this. Salvation and Holy Spirit baptism, anointing, years of experience in the Lord cannot remove sexual desire. They are natural. They come. But what we are talking about here is control. That's why the Bible says fulfilling. It talks about fulfilling the desires of the flesh. These desires will come. But fulfilling it inappropriately is what will land you to sin. Another sign can be anger or hate or depression. You may wake up and feel depressed, angry, and hate without a known cause. It's a danger sign. If you are not careful, you might insult the fallout with everyone in the home, fall out with everybody in the market, fall out with everybody in the office. You might even take it out on your wife, who may be closest person to you. Your public relation on such days must leave much that should not be seen or written. Anger has been described as short madness. Anger, short madness. Anger is not seen. But what you do when angry could cost you heaven. Anger tends to exaggerate the mistake of other people and lead to wrong conclusion and judgment when you are angry. It is a sure sign of spiritual weakness. A sensitive Christian should endeavor to come off his moments of anger. When you are angry, write a letter and post it under your pillow. At the end of your canal boiling point, pick up the letter and read again. You finally laugh at the madness of anger. Yes. That's why, you know, a woman became a victim of constant beatings in the hands of her husband. She became terribly worried about her plight and finally resorted to the house of a soothsayer. 
she requested from the witch doctor a concussion that will influence the husband to stop beating her. At the end of the day, the soothsayer recommended an antidote. He advised her to always rush into her room, put water in her mouth, don't swallow the water. Whenever you're angry, whenever your husband makes you angry, rush to the room, put water in your mouth, don't swallow the water. Well, this is to be constantly done whenever the husband annoyed her. That water was meant to remain in her mouth till her anger came down. This was religiously adhered to. You know, the woman adhered to that. It worked. The husband stopped beating her. Why? What led to the husband's action of constantly beating her? The husband beat her as a result of the constant poisonous world that came out of the mouth of the woman, especially when she got annoyed. She would say all sorts of nonsenses, all abuses on the husband, who usually replied with the equivalent beating. However, that water in her mouth, according to the soothsayer's recommendations, will not allow her to hold the abuses again on the man. It is wiser to keep quiet when angry than to talk. An angry man talking looks like a man under the influence of alcohol. Talking. It might be disastrous for a pastor, a manager, administrator, or politician to address the people or audience in an angry mood. When you're angry, you begin to address your people. You must necessarily make mistakes. Even such days, in keeping with it, what we are talking about, is a sign of spiritual person. When you see yourself boiling, I am aware of those in the church who have resting lions in their heart. It doesn't matter the addressing style, but there's a lion in their heart. They back like lion in the home. They back like lion in the marketplace. If you dare ask them, why are you behaving like this? He said, Pastor, my great-grandfather was a hot-tempered person. My grandfather, hot temper. If you go to my mother's lineage, hot temper, hot temper, hot temper. So it is in my blood. To me, I consider this as a doctrine of demons. The power of the gospel can save a man, deliver a man who is suffering from temper tantrum. God can do it. He has done it before to other people. He can do it again to you if you surrender yourself. What a shame and disgrace. The salvific gospel that changed a robber, the gospel that changed a prostitute, can also change a hot-tempered person. Just tell Jesus that you are guilty. No contest. Defending your iniquity is extra abomination. Say, I am sorry, I'm guilty. Save me from this dilemma. And he will do that. Another sign is idle talk. When you spend hours chatting on frivolities, you need to be careful. Another sign is of spiritual low percent is this idle talk. I don't talk leads to gossip, backbiting, murmuring, and this will go on and sin. When you spend hours on idle talk, the tendency is for you to begin to backbite. You see nothing good in another person. When you find a Christian full of this spirit, you deride and jeer at him. Because of your low spiritual low percent, you tend to judge every other person by your own standard. This is a dangerous period for the Christian. Laziness can also come. He said that the devil finds work for the idle hand. Laziness affects every fabric of your human mind and body. Days of laziness are more or less days of spiritual low percent. Sometimes ungodly desires can spring out of your heart. Gospel delivers us from the powers of sin. We became new creatures according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. He said, if anybody be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. All things have become new. We abandoned the old lives, the old pattern and the old ways. We left Egypt and Egypt went out of us. It is only Christians who are not serious that we leave Egypt while Egypt remains in them. And I want to ask you, dear listener, do you still have some Egyptian things in your life? The Bible is clear. The Bible is very, very clear in Galatians chapter 5 from 19 to 21. He said, the works of the flesh shall manifest, such are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresy, envy, murder, drunkenness, reveling, and such like, of which I tell you, therefore, as I have also told you in the time past, that they we do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It is not worthy that God cannot change his standard because of the changing world. The word of God remains the same. 
God cannot change his standard. Any day in the history of your spiritual life, when you begin to enjoy or accommodate the ungodly desire, things you rejected in the past, giving logical excuses, is a sign of low percent. It means you are now a dog returning to your vomit. Something that is excusable before man may not be excused before God. My dear Christian, why is it that you now accommodate hatred for your fellow human being, going about slandering, sowing discord among brethren? Jealousy and envy is no more sinful in your eyes. Your philosophy has become, if you cannot beat them, destroy them. What a shame. What a shame. Because you cannot beat them, you want to destroy them. You now remember Egypt constantly. If you, you were in the world, somebody will begin to say, if I, was in the, if I were in the world, if you were in the world, that is very funny. What do you mean? Your language has changed. Is it because we are Christians? Is it because we worship together? You now enjoy social club more than the church fellowship. Probably you come to the church to avoid questions by brethren. You want, don't want to get rich by all means. You desire to eliminate other people. Right now, nobody knows. But you desire to plot cool the pulpit in your church. Things you hated before, you are now for them. Gradually in your heart, you want to deceive everyone and marry somebody who is not a believer. You no longer relate with strong Christians. The friends you keep now are those who will not be courageous enough to condemn your evil or evil intentions. You now desire revenge or to quarrel with someone. Precious friends, let me warn that these are signs of spiritual low percent and you must do something about it today. I mean now, now, look at yourself. Are you having these signs? What a bad news that you are now. You are not in talking terms with somebody. And you are not even bothered. You have enmity. Your conscience must be sick. Your conscience is sick. Satan is gradually eating your spiritual fabric. Repent now or you perish. If you find this sign, can you bow your heads in prayers? Can you tell God, Father, I have discovered I may have become a dog. I've come back to things I vomited before. Save me, help me, pull me out of the gutters of days of spiritual low percent. I don't want to stop on the way. I want to make heaven. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Our Father, I give you the glory. I give you the praise. Thank you for my brother. As we have this introductory aspect of the days of spiritual low percent. Are there men and women listening to this message who are already guilty? They've seen signs. Things they rejected in the past, they've gone back to it. Strange desires have taken over in their lives. Our Father, I pray. Your will, the reason for this message is for deliverance. The reason for this message is that we'll be saved from decay. We are asking for your intervention. We are asking for your intervention. Have your way, Lord. Receive the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Remember that this message this is just part one. Can you look for part two of this message so that you can continue this teaching? Don't just stop here. We have only stopped here. We posted here about signs of this low percent. But try to get the next copy, the part two of this message, and it will enrich you to bless you abundantly. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.